Well, all right. We got ourselves another VHS Betamax haul. And what are we starting with? We're starting with a movie. I'm not quite sure why I bought, but I did. So this is Dead Easy. So this is a movie I never got. I haven't gotten a chance to watch it, but uh, it's a, from what I understand, this is an Australian thriller, I guess you can say. And this came out, the movie came out in 1982. And this is the... I believe this was the first U.S. release, and but this came out in like '89. I don't know, but I don't know. I was a, I liked the I liked the cover, I liked the box art, so I figured, eh, let me go ahead and buy it. And on top of that, I can appreciate. I didn't know Virgin actually made tapes, and you can see the the red watermarks at the bottom that that was the selling point for me that was uh that's what that's what did it for me and let's take a look at the back here's the info and let's see let's get this thing in focus okay so 19 1982 and packaging design 19 89 but i believe this is the first u.s u.s release i know that there was an earlier there there was an earlier video release but i believe it was only available overseas it was produced by vcl and uh, that's that's the um that's the international market but i bought it dead easy okay whatever whatever all right what's next terror knots so this is a we got ourselves a betamax we got ourselves a betamax of terror knots i believe this movie is from 1951 and the main reason why i bought this was the hella watermarks on the back it is enough it's a whiteout look at that Woo! i was like okay and it's in a i guess you could say it's in a vhs box but they they did their best <laughs> they did their best to i guess pad the box inside to make it to make the uh smaller betamax fit but Terror Knots, I think I, I think I got this for like thirty-five bucks. I'm like, all right, why not? Why not? And there's nothing else to really compare it to, because there are no other sold listings for this. So, or especially for well, rather for sealed. So I figured, eh, let's go ahead and pick it up. And it's a beta, and it's got watermarks. Let's go ahead and pick it up. Why not? And it's, I guess you could say, what sci-fi. Yeah, it's a sci-fi, sci-fi flick. All right, what's next? Speaking of sci-fi slash horror, we have The Invisible Man. So this movie is from uh, early 30s. Let's say early 30s. I believe that, yeah, this is like a pre-code movie. And th this release here, I believe, I did, listen, I researched the hell out of this release and from what i understand this is the so and please correct me if i'm wrong you people out there that know better this is the first video release for the invisible man right 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 okay so this is the 1987 video release and you can see gene shallot Gene Shalit, I remember him when I was a kid. I watched his movie reviews on the Today Show. He's got to be dead by now, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, he did like this series of MCA releases uh, called uh, Gene Shalit's Critics' Choice. And this, The Wolfman, and a handful of other movies were a part of that. And somehow some way his face is just all up on it as if <laughs> that's a selling point okay g shallot's face is a selling point i who knew who knew but uh like i said this is the first video release for 
the Invisible Man from what I can tell. I, 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 I research this every which way but loose. So again, please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I came across this and it's got the beautiful MCA watermarks on the side. This was the selling point for me. And you know, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of stickers on it, but it's okay. It's all right. I think I got this for like $35 or something like that. So I thought this was a decent buy, especially when it comes to I guess the universal horror genre, and this is the first release of one of those movies. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, what's next? Ooh, this is one of my favorite movies. Love this movie. What is dead may never die. Long live Chief Wahoo. <laughs> so we have uh, Major League from uh, 1989. Uh, I grew up in Northeast Ohio. And uh, this movie is a staple movie. <laughs> and uh, what I appreciate about this is that uh, this is the for either first or very very early print where you have the credits up top and you have the barcode at the bottom and uh, on top of that you have the Paramount Home Video watermark so this is my second copy of this anytime I can find a copy with the credits up top like this still sealed with the watermarks i'm probably going to jump on it so this is one of my uh favorite tapes right here major league and finding i guess you can say a first slash early release like this is really tough i remember looking for at least a couple of months before one popped up and and then a couple months then however many months later this had um this had made itself available so i said okay well all right because I, I the first time the first copy that i bought was about 100 and this one was about 50 so i was i was all over it when i saw it so hell yeah early release major league from 1989 these are these don't pop up very often i noticed more have popped up, but they were, they've been buy it nows. And to me, I think they've been underpriced. So, all right, we're moving on. Let's do, let's do, let's do this movie. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. This movie uh, is, now it's, I guess we'll bring this down a little bit. Okay, there you go. Okay, so it's spelled Pixodi. That's what I thought it was, but it's actually pronounced Pichot. Okay, a couple years ago, there was a YouTube channel, which I can't f seem to find now, that in, that in this YouTube channel highlighted movies that were obscure and out of the ordinary. And this was one of them. And uh, Pichot from 1980, and I believe this release is from 1981. And it was about, in this movie, I, I watched this movie the other day, and I, I'll say this movie is, it's brutal, it's raw, borderline depressing, if you allow yourself to be depressed by it. And uh, it felt, it had a very nihilistic tone to it. But uh, it was still good though. <laughs> I, will say, I will say it's still good. Again, it's definitely not for everybody, but it's about street kids in Brazil who get rounded up and after, I think a judge gets killed on the street and all of the street kids get rounded up and sent to a very, very, very corrupt reform school. And um, I, I, I can't say it's, it's, 
it's there's a story as I can't say it's a, it's it has much of a story as it is just kind of like a meditation on uh, the on what just on what happens. I don't know. It just because it it ends. Abruptly, I don't know if it ends abruptly or not, but it just, I don't know, it just feels, it just feels like things are just moving, they just happen to move along, and the movie just kind of stops at a point, you know, where the story just is moving, I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I'm jumbling words, but like I said, this movie is brutal, and what I appreciate about this, I wanted a release I wanted a pre-RCA home video Columbia release with this logo here. And it's a Betamax, which is very fitting because uh, P-Shot means Pee-Wee. We have a very small tape. And what I like about this is that it has the RCA watermark, so you can actually tell it's a... It's not like some reseal. So this is like everything about this I can appreciate. I I appreciate the movie. Uh, I appreciate the fact that it's a very early Columbia Pictures release pre-RCA. And I appreciate that the watermarks, that there are RCA watermarks. And I appreciate that it's a Betamax. Love Betamaxes. So yeah, everything about this I like. So yeah, Pichot, Pichot from uh, 1980. It's a pretty good chance this movie was what shot in 79, probably. So, but yeah, brutal, brutal, brutal movie. <laughs> Can't stress it enough. Very brutal. All right, what's next? Oh, 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 oh. Also, the this kid here. This kid here, he was actually a little bit of trivia. I forget his. Um, let's see, where, where is his name? Fernando. Fernando Ramos de Silva. Okay, so he was actually a street kid that was cast as the titular character, and titular character, and shortly there and shortly after making this movie he went back to life on the street and i wouldn't say less than 10 years later he gets killed by the cops so it, and that adds to the brutality of the movie but uh yeah uh, i i could probably say a lot more about this but uh we're gonna move on but yeah we have a sealed pea show all right what's next all right, all right. So, and the reason why I brought up the YouTube channel is that uh, that that channel brought this movie to my attention. So when I saw this, uh, so when I saw P Show, I uh, I uh, jumped on. I jumped on it. Okay, what's next? What's next? We have Cry Baby. We've got Cry Baby. Uh, but what is this? What what year did this movie come out? Let's see. So this is a 19, 1990 movie, 1990 release. Okay. All right. Now, the main reason why, the main reason why I bought this, this is going to be, you know what? I'm going to have to take this out. This is going to be really tough to see. But the main reason why I bought this. So you see the... MCA, this is kind of the, I guess you could say the newer MCA Universal logo, right? But the main reason why I bought this, this is going to be hella tough to see. Let's see if we can get a little bit of glare. Okay, so I bought this because it had the, I guess you can say, old school MCA home video watermarks on the side. You see that? I, I think I think this was like, I don't know, twenty dollars. And I bought this a few months ago, and I'm just now showing it off. But you can see the old school MCA home video watermarks, and 
the other releases that I see either don't have watermarks at all or they have the, I guess you could say, the newer MCA Universal watermarks. But I appreciated seeing these old school watermarks on the side. So that's the main reason why I bought this. And I noticed, and I noticed that a lot of the copies, it just a lot of sealed copies of Crybaby with Johnny Depp have all been... Um, been bought up so hmm, okay I, I think this was a good purchase especially in the long run all right what's next what's next is this thing gonna stand on its own let's see no it's not no it's not okay so we have flatliners flatliners and speaking of old school watermarks uh, this is this is a upgrade from the previous copy that i bought and this has the, let's see, RCA watermarks on the side, RCA Columbia Pictures logo on the box, and it has the RCA Columbia Pictures sticker uh, at the bottom. So I noticed that to find to find a copy with like all this going for it, it's tough. This is around that time where they Columbia Pictures transitioned to Columbia TriStar, and it's a pretty good chance a lot of the copies that you're going to see are going to have the TriStar watermarks, TriStar logo on the box, and the TriStar sticker at the bottom, along with, you know, like TriStar here as well on the back of the box so yeah finding this especially because the the last copy that i saw like this uh that i bought it, it was like the condition on it was really off so i found this for i think under 20 dollars. so i'm like all right let's go it let's go ahead let's do it let's do it so flatliners flatliners everybody all right what's next let's what's next let's do some i guess we're gonna end this video on some on some cartoons let's do that all right let's do this all right now here is and here's something i'm excited about actually <laughs> i didn't know i didn't think i would win this auction but i did so we have gobots battle of the rock lords and this movie came out at around... This came out the same year as Transformers the movie in 1986. This came out about... I want to say five months prior to Transformers the movie. And I remember my dad actually taking me to see this movie. I got to... I got... Man, because I'm thinking about it now. Like My dad, he was really no-nonsense. But he took me to a lot of nonsense. He took me to a lot of bullshit <laughs> that that I wanted to go to when I was a kid. And I gotta give him kudos for sitting through <laughs> I was sitting through all that horse shit that I wanted to see. <laughs> I can't imagine he enjoyed any of it, but he took me to see it though. <laughs> but um uh, what did I want to say about this? What did I want to say about this? Uh, GoBots, this is a really adorable Betamax of Battle of the Rock Lords. And on top of that, on top of that, here is the Rock Lords figure that I have. Boulder. I have a boulder. <laughs> uh, can we can we get a wide shot of this? Okay, so here's my sealed boulder. I still have to buy a nugget, but people want too much people want too much for nugget so i'm like eh, i can live i can live without this the, these aren't the transformers these are just uh these are just gobots for the most part so i can live without the rock lord slash gobots but anyway i, I want to say i like i i only saw this movie once in the theater 
and that was it. Like, I never, like, went back to see it on home video or anything like that. But it still, you know, spil still sparked enough nostalgia for me to want to pick this up. And this thing ended at the worst time possible. It ended, like, at, I want to say, 4 in the morning. And I just so happened to be up. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll throw out a bid. And I won it. So, <laughs> Battle of the Rock Lords, Betamax. And what I really appreciate about this, you know what? Let's take this thing out. Let's take it out. Hell with it. What I appreciate about this, it's very clean back, Betamax 1986, and it's got Paramount home video watermarks on the sides. This thing is freaking adorable. It's so cute. Ugh, I can't stand it. Look at that. And I remember... Like, when I was watching this movie, because you have, like, a lot of, I guess, serious, big-name actors doing the voices. And I remember Telly Savalas was in the credits. And I'm like, so the old guy who was Kojak is a selling point for this movie. <laughs> I'm like, really? Like, I was even thinking that as, like, a seven-year-old kid at the time. So, yeah. Battle of the Rock Lords and got a boulder figure. Look at that. Let's compare. Let's compare the animated with the toy. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Alright. Okay. But yeah, this thing is adorable, man. I can't take it. <laughs> it's no Transformers the movie, but yeah. I'll take what I can get. Alright, what's next? Last but not least, we have the Bugs Bunny Road Runner movie. I think I got this for like, I don't know, $6 or something like that. So this is the, I believe the 1986 release. And you can barely, just barely make out the Warner Brothers watermarks right there. And that's the main reason why I bought it. And you can see there's... The barcode is on the side, so there's no barcode on the back and no recycle symbol. And I, I, from what I remember, there were copies of this going for like around a hundred, you know. So I don't know. I think I don't know, it's probably underpriced when I bought it, but anyway, uh, yeah, Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie, and that's my haul. I'm sticking to it. And we'll see you next time with something. We'll, we'll see you with something. All right, bye.